I want you to look at this book. Um, it's the dictionary used in the yeshiva. And um, it's by Jastro. And I, I basically want to uh, show you this one word here, palak. And I want you to see it. Uh, you see this word deity, to worship? Come down here and see it. Palak. See that word right there? Where my finger is? Palak. To worship. If you doubt what I'm saying, go to page 1178. Now, why is this important? Well, we don't worship idols. We know that from the three youths who were in the flame, but they weren't harmed. And we know that they refused to worship uh, the idols of Nebuchadnezzar. But all peoples will worship the bar and nosh. Same word, palak, both places. Uh, look at Daniel 3.18 and look at uh, also Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 or 14. And you will see that according to Daniel, Moshiach is divine, Elohut. Now, Rashi says that Daniel 7, 13 and 14 is talking about the Moshiach. So if Rashi says it's the Mashiach and Daniel says the Mashiach is Elohut or divine, in other words, God, then you have a big problem if you uh, want to argue all of that, thinking that maybe you know more about it. Now, I want to show you the prayer book here. This is very important. This is the uh, Jewish prayer book. Now, here's a mistake. This is the Shalosha Asar Ikarim, the 13 principles of Maimonides. You see this word here? It says that God is Yahid. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. So again, if you want to take a man's word or your rabbi's word against God, you could do that, but you're... You're playing Russian roulette with your soul. Now I want to show you something else in this um, prayer book. Because the prayer book has a key to heaven in it. If you could only see it. If you could just have eyes to see and ears to hear. You see this? In this particular prayer book, it's the order of the priestly blessing. Seder, Barachat. Uh, Kohanim, on this page, it's on this in this prayer book, it's page 625. Do you see this? Baracha Hameshuleshet. The in the uh, threefold blessing, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. There's a threefold blessing in the Aaronic benediction. There's a threefold blessing in Isaiah when he says, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Uh, now, notice this adjective has to agree with the noun. Baraha is a noun meaning blessing, and it's feminine. And this adjective is in the feminine. It has to agree in gender. Not Meshulash, but Meshuleshet. Now, I want to just take you uh, for a moment here. I just want to take you to a Hebrew dictionary. Because I, I, I don't expect you to take my word for anything. So I, I have to show you. Okay. Um, if we go to the word uh, Baracha. You see that noon there? It means it's in the feminine. So, blessing, baracha, has to have a feminine form of the adjective. It cannot be meshulash, it has to be meshuleshet. Now, if you go over to the, to the noun kedusha, you see it here? 
Kedusha, holiness. See that noon? It's also a feminine noun. It has to have a feminine adjective, Kedusha Meshuleshet. Okay? So that takes care of that. So you'll see that I'm not misusing this. Now we're going to see that man has a singularity and a uh, plurality. And that when God made man in his image, uh, he created oto, him, singular, zahar, una, uh, una keva, and, uh, you know, male and female, bara, otam, them, that's plural. So the word Adam right here is a can be a singular but it's also can be a plural just as Elohim can be a singular or it can be a plural you say where am I getting this chapter 1 verse 27 voracious okay now I'm trying to make a point here about the uh, about a God and man and how God has been, been been made in man's image. Now go to Isaiah chapter 48 verse uh, 16. It says, Come ye near unto me, hear ye this, I have not spoken Baseter in secret, Merosh from the beginning, from the first, from the top, from the head, from the time that it takes place, there am I. And now Adonai Hashem and his Ruach hath sent me. The me there is Moshiach, the Evid Hashem. See Isaiah 42 1. See Hashem's Kedusha HaMeshuleshet here. Now, if you if you go to um, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 19. Um, no, I'm sorry. I think it's 42, 19. Who is blind? You see that? Who is blind? but my servant. Isaiah 42, 19. So there's a blind servant and there is a servant who sees. If you go over to Isaiah 53, you will see that he sees his seed. Uh, it says, um, it says right here, yet it pleased Hashem to bruise him he hath put him to suffering. When thou shalt make his nephesh on a sham offering for sin, he shall see Zerah. So the blind servant is Israel. Israel can't see. Who is blind like my servant Israel? But the Mashiach is the seeing servant who sees his seed. And we want to make sure that we're one of the seed that he sees. Now, uh, if I can uh, keep from getting too uh, messed up here, perhaps I can show you what, el what else I'm trying to show you. Because basically, uh, I I'm trying to put before you the Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. Um, and I want you to go to page 2 uh, in the Orthodox Jewish Bible, which is afii.org forward slash capital O, capital J, capital B dot PDF. And um, you see, uh, but the point here is that humankind in Genesis 127 is Ha'adam in Hebrew. And that verse shows man as having both singularity and plurality. Oto and Otam, Genesis 1.27, thus reflecting his maker, the Beshefer, 
Elohim, who also has singularity and plurality in his complexity. Compare Ehad in Genesis 2.24 and Deuteronomy 6.4, that man and woman are Ehad, but God is also Ehad. Genesis 1.26 uses a majestic plural, but the doctrine of Hashem's Kedusha Meshulesh, threefold holiness, is seen in Elohim, Genesis 1.1, and the Devar Hashem, Genesis 1.3, uh, by the word of the Lord with the heavens made, and the Ruach Elohim, Genesis 1.2, engaged in in the work of creation. When we look at the original language in Zohar, volume 3, uh, page 288b, this is the Amsterdam uh, edition, we see the text which comments on Daniel 7.13, where the Baranosh Mashiach comes to the Atik, the Atik, you mean the Ancient of Days, the Zohar says, the Ancient One is described as being two. So here he, uh, the author of the Zohar, is admitting that the Baranosh is God. But the Atik Yamin is also God. Resh Yud Final Noon. You can look at it yourself. I'll show you where in a minute. Aramaic for two. God and the Moshiach called by Daniel, the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man, are obviously a picture of God as two in the Bible, and the Zohar owns up to this fact, calling God two. So I'm reading right here, it says, um, described as being two, Tav, Resh, Yud, Final Noon, Aramaic for two. God and the Mashiach, called by Daniel, the Ancient of Days, and the Son of Man, the Barnosh, are obviously a picture of God as two in the Bible, and the Zohar owns up to this fact, calling God two. Two sentences prior to that, on the same page, the original language of the text of the Zohar says, the Ancient Holy One, i.e. God, Daniel 7.13, is found with three, Tav, Lamed Tav, Aramaic for three. Three heads or chiefs or archetypes. Resh, Yud, Sheen, Yud, Final Noon, Aramaic for heads, which are united in one. Chet, uh, Dalet, Aramaic for one. Here we have a picture of the Zohar. In the Zohar, we have this picture of the Raz. The mystery of God's unity, the distinct Hayav, uh, Havayot, subsistences, Havayot, a a a a a sent a um, uh, this is kind of complicated, but let me just say it like this: the word subsistence means what has a real existence. Uh, there was a, a philosopher who used the word Dasein. Dasein <clears throat> being there, in other words, or presence. And he said, the own most of Dasein consists in its existence, in its being, its own being, is an issue for it. In its being, its own being is an issue for it. Now, a cat doesn't worry about being a cat, but a human being does. Uh, because he, uh, a human being has a self a trans, uh, transcendent uh, knowledge of, of, of his own so here we have a picture in the Zohar of the Raz, the mystery of God's unity, the distinct Havayot, subsistences or modes of being. A subsistence 
is means uh, what has a real existence. The Elohut Bar Enosh has a real existence distinct from the Elohut Atik Yomin in Daniel 7, 13, and 14. Uh, and this, these distinct Havayot, or subsistences, are in Adonai Ehad. God is Ehad, one, but a complex one, not three gods, only Hashem, one, but with Hashem's Kedusha, Meshuleshet, threefold holiness, Isaiah 6, 3. Now, why is this important? The Father draws you, Elohim Ha'av, John chapter 6, verse 44. No one is able to come to me uh, unless Ha'av, who sent me, should draw him, and I will raise him up on the Yom Ha'acharon. Okay? Uh, there's also Elohim Haben, uh, the Zun Funderoi uh, uh Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. And what does he do? He redeems you. In him we have the Padut, the redemption, the Geolah release on payment of ransom through the Kaporadam of Moshiach. And this is uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Uh, so, I'm not going to read the rest of the verse. You can read it yourself. Uh, and then the Ruach HaKodesh convicts you. John, uh, Yohanan 16, 8. It says, And having come, that one, uh, the you know, the Ruach HaKodesh, will expose and convict the Olam HaZek concerning Het and concerning Zedek and concerning Mishpat. So, uh, these... Uh, are very important uh, ideas for your salvation. And I just want you to take a moment and actually uh, go to Google. And uh, Google Zohar 3 and one and when you do that you will come to this page and here you have if you will click on it you have a book written by a lecturer uh, in Hebrew at Oxford University called the great mystery or how could Meshulash be Echad okay then if you go down you will actually have this so, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35, Ein od milvado, it means there's none besides him. And we believe that. Uh, we believe that there's only one God, it's pure and simple, one God. But within God's self-awareness, there are three. In, in essence, he is one. But uh, he, he is, he's being there three ways. And we're not talking about any kind of modalism here. We're talking about that the real God knows himself as Elohim Ha'av, Elohim Ha'ben, and Elohim Haruach HaKodesh. If you go to Shofatim 1134, you find the word Yahid or Yahida in the feminine. If you go to Bereshis 224, you find the word Echad, also in the Shema. Now, if you will listen to the rest of this video, you will, you will see, uh, you know, we, there are, there are three Rashim. In the standard Brown Driver and Briggs lexicon on page one thousand one hundred and eight, you have this word. Here it is. It says to serve as deity. To to render service, to pay reverence to deity. 
and to serve or pay reverence to deity. Now notice, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to pay Lamed Het, the Geter, the, the gods, uh, the the Yiddish word uh, Gimel, Ayan, Tet, Ayan, Resh, uh, of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, they said, O king, you may throw us in this fiery furnace, but we're not going to pay Lamed Het to your idols. But then four chapters later, all peoples, all languages, all tongues, pay Lamed Het the Bar Enosh, which means that the Bar Enosh is not an idol. He, he comes on the glory clouds to the Atik Yamin, and in Acts chapter uh, 1, verse 9, those glory clouds take him away. After he gives his final command to the Shulachim, He's taken away by the glory clouds. Uh, and we're going to see him come again on those same glory clouds. He is the Bar Enosh. He's not an idol. And the reason this Yiddish Bible that I'm doing is so important is we're going to bring out things like that. We're, we're going to show Mashiach, God willing, in every verse, every verse of the, uh, because whenever these important words are used, and they have a messianic referent, uh, there's going to be a note. And uh, the ancient rabbis in, 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 in agreed, many of them agreed that this was talking about Moshiach, uh, Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Uh, and so what I'm saying to you, friend, is Moshiach is not an idol. We're talking about the Elohut of Moshiach. We're talking about how he's not just an ordinary guy. Uh, he's, he's called El Gibor in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 9. But uh, here he's, he's served as deity in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, with the very word that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused uh, worship of of uh, of an idol, they refuse to serve Nebuchadnezzar's idols, his uh, gods, uh, and, and they and, and the same word is used there. So if 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 the idols of Nebuchadnezzar cannot be pay Lamed Het reverenced, but the Baranosh can be pay uh, pay uh, Lamed Het reverenced, then why are you saying that? Uh, Mashiach, the Zunfunderoibister, cannot be Elohut. This is, uh, this is, you're, you're actually arguing with the Bible. You're saying that you know more than Daniel. And friend, from the Dead Sea Scrolls, we know that Daniel is not something uh, written during the Maccabean period. The Imperial, Aramaic, and Many other clues tell us that this is an authentic, an authentic writing of Daniel from the sixth century, and he's telling you that Gehinom is Deraon Olam. And when you look at the, that fire, you see the fourth one in the fire. The Bar Elohim is the one that saves them from the fire. Now, if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are saved from the fire, then if you want to be saved from the fire, you better respect the word pay Lamed Het, which is found in chapter 3, verse 12, verse 14, verse 17, etc. It's also found in Ezra chapter 7, verse 19, and verse 24. And finally, in chapter 7, verse 14 of the book of Daniel, Lord, I want to pray right now that everyone watching this video will tremble at the word Pelam and Het because it truly tells us who we're dealing with. The Shofet Olam, the Bar Enosh, who's been given a kingdom, an eternal kingdom that can never be destroyed. He's coming and we're going to have to deal with him sooner or later. 
every knee will bow sooner or later to the Zunfundreubster. And all people's languages, tongues, they will all pay Lamedhet, pay reverence to as deity, the Barinosh, when he comes on the glory clouds. Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. So we thank you, Lord, that the Mashiach is not just an ordinary man. Isaiah called him El Gibor. Daniel called him the Barinosh, worthy of pay Lamedhet reverence and service. So we receive him right now. Mashiach, come into my life, take control of my life, and I will follow you and respect your your true Zunfundorbister reality. And the, looking at a prayer book right here, and uh, in the morning prayers in the shul, there's this part where they stand up. Uh, it's called the Amida. And then it's repeated. And when the cantor reads the repetition, he says, Our God and God of our fathers, bless us with the threefold blessing. Elokeinu, uh, Veloke Avotenu, Barheinu, Babaracha Hameshuleshit. Now, you know the word shalosh means three. Meshuleshit means threefold. Now, if there's a book by Herbert Locke here called All the Threes in the Bible. Um, you know, the thing is, when uh, Abraham is in his tent, there are three that show up, and yet God is there. And, and this, this idea of threeness, it's right there at the very beginning of the Torah. Because there's Elohim, there's the Devar Elohim, and there's the Ruach HaKodesh. Notice I'm saying Elohim. Uh, they don't like to say Elohim. Uh, they don't want to use God's name in vain. So uh, I'm trying to accommodate that. And I'm telling you that in um, Isaiah... Uh, chapter uh, 48, verse uh, 16. You're going to see that God is three. You say, wait a minute. Let's, let's read that text. Chapter 48, verse 16 of uh, Isaiah. It says, come, come ye near unto me. So here you have me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken, but set there in secret, Merosh, from the first, from the time that it takes place, there am I, and now Adonai Hashem, and his Ruach, HaKodesh that is, hath sent me. Now this is Moshiach, this is the Evid Hashem, uh, we've seen him introduced back in Chapter 42, verse 1 of Isaiah. So here you have Hashem's Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. You have uh, the uh, Moshiach. You have uh, his, his uh, spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. And you have Adonai. All there in that verse. Isaiah 48, verse 16. Now, when you get to Kohelet, or uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 12, you see this word hoot. Now, you know, in English we say, I don't give a hoot, or, you know, an owl hoots. This is not H-O-O-T, this is C-H. It's the het, hoot. It could be a string, it could be a, a chord, it could be uh, even a thread depending on how it's used. It's used about eight times in the Bible. But here, in Kohelet 4.12, it says, Hahut HaMeshuleshet. The string, or the chord, with a threefold function. Threefold. It's not easily broken. Notice, there's one 
string or one chord, only one, but it's threefold. Now, this is just one instance. Of, there are many others. Uh, look at uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22, the chokmah. The wisdom that was with God that he possessed in the beginning, that was always with him, that was like a, uh, like an Oman, a craftsman, chapter 8, verse 30. Uh, and then we see that he's also his son. He delights and loves this Oman, and he's his son. Uh, the Zunfun Roibister, chapter 30, verse 4. And, uh, and, and Mashiach is called the son of God in several places. And uh, he's also called El Gibor in Isaiah 9, verses 5 to 6. And then you see that, that uh, enigmatic figure, the uh, Bar Enosh, coming on the glory clouds to the Atik Yomin in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. And this is referred to in the Zohar. And it says that God is one, but he's also three. Right there in the Zohar. And I, if you go to our website, afii.org, uh, or if you just Google Zohar, Z-O-H-A-R, three and one, you'll see that we have it right there for you. We even have it in Rashi's script. Now, uh, Job, in chapter 9, verse 33, is looking for a mohiak, uh, an arbitrator, uh, a mediator who can lay his hand on God and also lay his hand on man. Uh, and of course, only one person can do that. A and that's the Elohut, uh, of the word divinity. Uh, uh, the, the Mashiach's, we're talking about the Mashiach's Elohut, not Elo. Not Elohot, uh, that's gods. We do not believe in three gods. But Elohot, divinity. The Mashiach is not an ordinary Joe who uh, happens to be a great rabbi and everybody at 770 Eastern Parkway thinks he's just great. No, friend. You can't come on the glory clouds. You can't be the Hokma that was with God before all eternity uh, you you can't be his agent in creation. You you cannot be his agent in redemption. You cannot uh, rise from the dead on the third day. Notice that word three again. You 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 can't do that if you're just an ordinary mortal. Now, friends, we didn't make this doctrine up. It's in the Bible. Now, if you have uncircumcised ears, eyes, heart, spirit and you're basically a Goyesh, a Goliath uh, in, your, in your inner being, and you look at King David, you squint at him, and you, you don't get it. You look at the Bible, you squint at it, and you don't get it. Uh, then there's only one way for you to understand what I'm saying, and that is you must be born again. You must get the, the new heart, the new mind, the new spirit, uh, that, because the, this, these are spiritual words that have to be spiritually discerned, by people of the Spirit. But every day, friend, in the weekday morning prayers in the shul, they're looking at this Babaracha uh, HaMeshuleshet. Uh, you know? And I'm looking at it right now. It, 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 the word is actually there. Threefold blessing. Everything is threefold. God is threefold. His holiness is threefold. His essence is one, but he's a personal God who comes to you uh, as the God of the Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. This is the God of Israel. And uh, here you see it again. Now, let me ask you something. How is it that a guy like me from Oakland City, Indiana, you know, <laughs> a guy like me 
can understand this. And you, a Jew, a Jewish person, cannot understand this. I believe you can understand it, but you don't want to understand it because you know what it will cost you. You know that believing in a God, the God of Israel, whose, whose Moshiach is the, this, this, this Moshiach, this supernatural Moshiach Savior, Goal Redeemer, who comes to Zion, he, he is, uh, he, he has the Elohut Shel Moshiach, the divinity of Moshiach, and, and he, he, the Ruach HaKodesh is not just a thing, he's not just a force, he is, the, he is a person. So Elohim Ha'av, Elohim Ha'ben, the Zunfun the, the the who has the Elohut Shel Moshiach, the divinity of Moshiach, and the Ruach HaKodesh. This is who God is. He is one. He is a Had. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. But he is also in his in his uh, 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 in his being. He his essence is Echad, but he comes to us personally in the Kedusha Hameshuleshet, the threefold holiness. Holy, 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 kadosh, 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 says Isaiah. So this is who God is. Like it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Uh, if you want to know God, you you know this this is who you're dealing with. Yes, He's one God. We don't believe in three gods. He's one God. But when He comes to you, he, now look at me. I'm a human being, right? And I'm coming to you right now. But I have a body, I have a spirit, I have a mind. If I got Alzheimer's, or if I were brain dead on life support, I would still have a spirit and a body. If my body were destroyed, I would still have uh, uh, the, the, my spirit. My spirit would go to the Lord, and I would, I would, uh, I would know the Lord uh, uh, in some way fashion. So I'm coming to you with a threefold uh, functionality here, friend. I'm one man, but I have a, 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 three, a threefold uh, functionality. And, and uh, take it or leave it, you know, this is what I am. And this is what God is. He is one God of the Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. His his essence is one, but his uh, his 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 being, he comes to you with three full holiness, and uh, and and his per, his personhood is threefold, and that's who he is. If you want to know him, you have to know him as he is. You you cannot you cannot uh, you cannot know him the way you want to know him. You have to know him the way he actually is, and this is the way he is in his infallible, inerrant revelation from from verse one, from from in the beginning, Elo Elohim. Uh, there's a plurality of majesty even in his name, and, and as you read the Torah, when you when uh, you know when you you, when you see how uh, the, there are Elo, uh, Elohim, Aharim, other gods, that word that word can mean gods, but it also can mean one God in, in his in, in the in the plurality of his Majesty, and and in his Majesty he is Elohim Ha'av, Elohim Ha'ben, and Elohim Haruach Hakodesh. Lord, I pray right now that somebody watching this will understand who God is and receive Him. Receive his uh, Moshiach, who stands at the door and knocks, who wants to come and make his, his home in their heart and reveal the true God and Chaye Olam. Amen. All right, today uh, we're talking about God, Hashem, 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're speaking about the way he reveals himself in the scriptures. And we find out, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. He is Echad. But we also find out that, uh, that uh, a man and a woman can become Echad. When they get married, uh, they become one flesh. Even though they're two, they become one. And this word Echad, it seems to imply a complex unity. That God is one, but he is also, well, look at the beginning of Bereshus, Genesis, the first three verses. We find out in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And then it says, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then it says, the Ruach Elohim uh, hovered over the face of the waters. And then it says, and Elo Elohim said, let there be light. In other words, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Uh, Te Tehillim, I think it's uh, the 33rd chapter. Uh, uh, but, the, but here's the point. Already we see the complexity of, of the unity of God. That God is uh, Elohim Ha'av. He is Elohim Hadavar. And he is Elohim Haruach HaKodesh. And uh, when we get to uh, Psalm 33, we, we have this confirmed, that by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the Devar Hashem were Shemaim made, and all the Tzava of them, by the Ruach of his mouth. Uh, so, friends, uh, uh, little Shmuel, little Samuel, he didn't know the Lord because the, the Devar Hashem, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed unto him. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and and the Word was God. Uh, and, and so, when you get to the the uh, the book of Daniel, you see that the Bar Enosh comes on the glory cloud. Uh, that the Mashiach is the Bar, the the Sun. Uh, we all we also know uh, in in Mishle in in Proverbs it says. Who has thrown all the stars in this, into the sky? What is his name and what is his son's name? So God has a son. His son is his word. But his son is also the Mashiach, the Baranosh. And, and so when the, when the Baranosh takes on flesh, it says, uh, Unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given, and his name shall be called El Gibor. So, so, uh, you see that God is one, but also he has a complexity in his unity. Yes, uh, this is not a, a doctrine that we made up. It's one that's in the scriptures. We're talking about the Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. Now, I, I'm going to talk to you just for a minute outside the Bible. I'm going to uh, take some uh, rabbinic books to illustrate this. Here is the Zohar. And, and, and in this particular uh, book, which is highly revered by the Hasidim, uh, uh, here's what it says. It says, the, the ancient Holy One is revealed, he's found, in three heads, which are united in one. And that head is threefold. Uh, threefold exalted. Threefold. Uh, in other words, the Kedusha HaMeshuleshet, that God is three. And here it actually says it, that, he, that God is one, but he's also three. Amen. And then it speaks of, of, uh, of, in, of the book of Daniel, where uh, God is two. Uh, he's also three, but he's two. Now, where does it say that he's two? Well, you have the Bar Enosh coming to the Atik Yomin in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. There they are in the glory clouds. Here is Elohim Ha'av. He's called the Atik Yomin. The, the Ancient of Days. Here is the Bar Enosh. Here, here's the Bar, the, the Son, the Mashiach, the Ben Dovid, but also Ben Hayalokim, the Zun Funderoibister. And they're both God. You say, oh, you, some, some, some guy is uh, making up this doctrine. Friend, this is the Zohar. Don't tell me it's uh, something that, that the Goyim have come up with. This is the Holy Zohar that says this. Uh, I'm looking at uh, 
page 576. Now, if you go to Google and you type Zohar, Z-O-H-A-R, three in one, you will see this very page. And you will be able to look at the Aramaic and you'll be able to, to actually see the translation and you'll even see it in Rashi script. And, and, uh, and, and this is not something that we came up with. It, it's something that's in Judaism. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Today I want to think a little bit about Rosh Hashanah, which is coming up very soon. And uh, uh, this word Rosh, Rosh, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh. You know, in the Zohar, it says about the uh, Rosh, it says, uh, the Ancient of Days has three Roshim, three heads. And the head of the year is Rosh Hashanah. He reveals himself in three, three Roshim, or archetypes, or heads. All three forming but one, that is Rosh Echad. Now, this is a, a very interesting little passage in the Zohar, which is revered so much. And, you know, uh, you might say, oh yeah, but he's, he's mis-exegeting the Zohar. Well, look, a, uh, a person might have listened to Paul preaching. He takes a shrine in Athens that has a little sign on it to, to the unknown God. He uses that as a bridge to preach. And uh, somebody might say, well, we really know the name of that God. The sign is really wrong. And, you know, he really shouldn't have used that and blah, blah, blah. But that's, that's irrelevant. A bridge is just a bridge. We've got to get to the other side of what that bridge is leading us to. And what the bridge is leading us to is what the Bible actually says. Now, there was a, a, a military commander and uh, he vowed a vow, a very foolish vow, V-O-W, that got a bad outcome for his offspring. And uh, his vow was basically, it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the delet of my house to meet me when I return, Shalom from the the, you know, the battle with the Ammonites shall surely be Hashem's and I will offer it up for an Olah, for, you know, uh, an offering on the Mizbeach. Uh, now, that was really stupid because he only had one child, uh, Yahida. Look at uh, Shofatim or Judges chapter 11, verse 34. So we're looking at the word Yahid here. I'm going to show it to the camera in, uh, in Hebrew. Yahid. You see that? Yod, Chet, Yod, Dalet. Yahid. Now, there's another word which I want to show you. Echad. You see that word? Aleph, Het, Dalet. Now, I want you to imagine a wedding. Here comes the couple, man and wife, and they have a small wedding party, not two or three bridesmaids, just one, only one bridesmaid. So here comes the man and the woman. They are hot, they are one, according to Bereshit chapter two. But then behind them comes the bridesmaid, the bridesmaid. She is Yahid, she's only one. So the man and the wife are a hot, a composite unity of two becoming one, just as the Zohar says that God is a composite unity of three becoming one. And the man and the wife are a hot, and the bridesmaid is Yahid. She's, she, they only have only one, only one, strict numerical, not complex at all, strict Simple one. So the man and wife are one and the bridesmaid is one. But there are two words for these words, one in English. 
There are two words in Hebrew to make this clear. The man and wife are had, Genesis 2.24, but the strictly one bridesmaid is Yahid, Judges 11.34. So Yiftach or Jephthah made a vow. His child paid the price for it. Here's my point. Maimonides, the philosopher, and his religious adherents say that God is like the bridesmaid, Yahid. But the Bible says God is like the couple, Ehad. So religious Jews have joined Maimonides in his Jephthah vow, and their children are paying the price for it. Now look, we're not talking about two gods, friend. We're not talking about three gods. We're not talking about polygamy. We're talking about monotheism. We're talking about one God in a composite unity. We didn't make this up. You can't make this up. God says this. And you know what? There would be a big contradiction in the Bible if he didn't say this. Because when you get to Daniel chapter 7 and you compare it to Daniel chapter 3, you see the Ancient of Days that the Zohar is referring to. And um, the Bar Enosh, when it comes to the Bar Enosh, the uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will not reverence as, as deity, as uh, Elohut, uh, the, the idols, Nebuchadnezzar's idols, but all peoples will reverence as deity, as Elohut, the Bar Enosh. We didn't make that up. It's in the Bible. And if you look carefully, you'll see that Daniel's not the only one who thinks that the Mashiach is Elohut. It's in Isaiah. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely there. And uh, uh, it's in uh, the Psalms. It's in, uh, uh, David says, uh, the, Adonai, the, uh, the Adon said to my, my, my Lord, uh, uh, Adonai, uh, so the Mashiach is his Adon. Ha Adon, the, the Lord that you seek will, will suddenly come to his temple. The, this is the Adon Kol Haaretz. This is, um, this is uh, you know, Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. So when you get to Brooklyn and you see all these bumper stickers, Ein Od Milvado, and you see uh, the the Jewish people quoting Deuteronomy 4.35 to say that Hashem is Yahid and not Ahad, then you have to go back and you have to look at that word. It says, Ain, there is no, Od, other, Milvado, uh, from, to, very literally, aside or separate from him. And we believe that. We don't believe that uh, there, besides uh, Jupiter, there's Venus. And besides Venus, there's Mercury. We don't believe in polytheism. We don't believe in tritheism. We believe that God is one. Yes, strictly one. But there is within God's being a mishulash and and, and it's always been there from, from the first verse. He had his Devar Hashem. He spoke and created everything by the word of the Lord where the heavens made. And his word is, his, is, is called his son. Uh, and his, his word was always with him as a son, as a, an Amon craftsman at his side. And the, 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 the Ruach HaKodesh was always there too. And so God has always had his Devar Hashem and his Ruach Hashem. And yet Hashem is one, Echad. Uh, and, uh, and a man and a woman are not strictly one person. Listen, uh, let's get this for the Supreme Court because they seem to be mi mixed up about a marriage. Phil Goble cannot marry Phil Goble. Agreed? Agreed? A man has to have a woman. There has to be two. And yet, they are echad. Now, if you can't wrap your mind around that, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's just the way it is. A, comp a complex unity. Amen? And, uh, and, and, and so, what I'm trying to get to here is 
that Jephthah made a big mistake and it hurt his children. And the Jewish people are making a big mistake. They're actually rewriting the Bible. They're saying, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Yahid. The 13 principles of the faith of Maimonides. And we're going to believe that. Let me tell you something. We have a lot of illegitimate children in the United States. And the number is growing exponentially. Uh, even in the house of God. Uh, Joe, do you know who your father was? No, really, I don't. I've never met him. I don't have a clue. What about you, Jill? No, he was a deadbeat dad. Never met the guy. No, he was, he, he was never around. Sorry, didn't, didn't, didn't meet him at all. Listen, do you know that when those rabbis were dealing with Yeshua, he said, you are of your father, the devil. You're acting like the devil. You're wanting to commit murder against an innocent man. And he said, and he, he said look, I am from my father, but you are from your father. The humankind has a demonic, devilish blindness, uh, a lying spirit. Right. We must be born again. Are you going to be a seed of the serpent or a seed uh, that, you know, the, the Mashiach, who's the seed of the woman, he says he will see his seed. He will see his seed. Are you going to be some of the seed that he sees? Isaiah chapter 53 he will see his seed and, the, and, and his work, his work will prosper. Uh, and, and, you know, God's work will prosper in his hand. And, and so what, what we have now is a lost world, a lost world that needs God. And what I'm trying to tell you today is that he who has the Ben Hayalokim has the, uh, you know, the father. If you have the 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 the, the Ben Hayalokim, you have the Father also. Uh, he is the the Elokim Ha'av. You don't have him unless you have the Elokim Ha'ben. And, and uh, you know, if you had tried to tell me this, as long as I had a reprobate mind, as long as I had a mind darkened by by. Uh, the fact that I was lost, a, a child of Adam, headed for eternal uh, destruction, I would not have understood it, nor would I have cared about it. It would have just been an empty creed, like so many people have who are not really born of the Spirit. They can recite it, oh yes, but, but uh, it's only head knowledge. Friend, you have to know him. What did he say to Philippos? Have you been with me so long and you still don't know me? He said, oh, hallelujah. Whoever has received him, to, to them he gave the, the right, the authority to become Ben Hayalokim. You must receive Yeshua. Get a new mind. Get your mind renewed. Get your ears circumcised. Get your, your heart circumcised. Get the bris milah of the Ruach HaKodesh. Get the mikvah bris of Colossians chapter 2. Go under the water. Let the old mind be buried. Arise in the newness of life with a new mind, circumcised ears, circumcised heart. And, and then, you will, uh, then you will not only understand as the Holy Spirit gives you the, the uh, understanding, but you will have a will. Hallelujah. You'll have the Breed Hadashah of Jeremiah 31, where the, the Torah is written in your heart and you know God and you want to, to do his will. And these things matter to you. And you don't just write them off or brush them off as if of no importance. Friend, if you miss eternity, if you miss God, if, 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 if in your stubbornness you don't even bother to study these things or you study them only as an anti-missionary to try to pull people away from the Lord, then you are truly, truly lost. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Therefore, just as through one man, we're going to put uh, this sin in this one man. It says, through one man, Sin, or het, entered into the Olam Hazeh. We're going to put this in the Olam Hazeh. 
And then it says, uh, chapter 5, verse 12, and through Het entered Mavet. So we're going to put this inside here. And then it says, verse 12, and so Mavet passed through to Kol B'nai Adam. Now you might say, well, that's not me. You're, you're, not, you're not talking about me. Because I don't believe in Het Kadmon. I don't believe in original sin. I don't believe that Adam is in me. I don't believe that. It's just a myth. I believe in Neanderthals and uh, hominids and uh, all this stuff. I believe in paleontology and science. And I'm, I'm not going to accept that. But, uh, but the thing is, you have to see that uh, the scriptures are very clear. That uh, when you and I walk around, we are actually walking around with Het Kadmon, with Adam in us. You see, Adam was not like the animals, not like anything before. His name, Adam, uh, and Adama, his name sounds like mud. He is Mr. Mud. He was created. The Beshepher reached down and molded him out of the mud and breathed the breath of life into him. And uh, from the mud he came, and to the mud he will go back. Amen. But the difference between him and everything else is something called the image of God. Amen. He is made in God's image. Yes. Now, when God walks into a fun house and he sees all these distorted mirrors, he starts getting angry. He doesn't want to see his reflection distorted like that. He doesn't walk up. He doesn't want to walk up to the uh, to the Adolf Hitler mirror and see that looking back at him. He doesn't want to walk up to various uh, mirrors I could mention and see that. Now, listen, friend. Let me tell you something. America has it all wrong. America is fixated on the frame. Is it a black frame? Is it a white frame? Is it a red frame? Is it a yellow frame? Well, I don't like uh, Asians. Well, no, I, I don't like uh, African Americans. Well, I don't like Native Americans. Well, I don't like the red man. Well, the red man says, well, I don't like the white man. He gave us fire water. And, and so we have all of this uh, focus on the frame. But all of these people are of one blood, it says in Acts, and they all are in the image of God. And it does say, no matter how pious you are, Rabbi, when you come up to Yeshua and you start giving him your line, well, we know you're a great teacher and uh, you couldn't do these miracles if God wasn't with you. He will cut to the chase and he will say, Look, you have to straighten up. That's what my mother used to say to me. Straighten up. You go into a fun house, you take those distorted bent mirrors, you straighten them up, and then you get a, a clear, accurate reflection, and then God isn't angry anymore. His anger calms down because he's seeing what he looks like. He doesn't want to see what you're showing him. And let me tell you something. Philip, Philip, have you been so long with me and you still don't know me? He who has seen me has seen the Father. I am the perfect image of God. I am. And if you will invite me to come in, I will restore that image. I will make you right. I will put you right with God. We need black people, yellow people, red people, and white people to get the image of God restored in them. And I'm tired of your racism. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of you calling yourself a believer and that's all you talk about and that's all you think about. It, it's, it's, yes, a man said all men are created equal, but he owned slaves. Okay, so you, you want reparations. You, you want us to turn back the clock and fix everything. Listen, friend, the only thing that can be fixed is you. Amen. The only thing that can be fixed is me. Amen. And, and uh, I've got to tell you, there's a black hole out there. There's also a black hole in here. Yes, I got to tell you this, friend, because you see, we need God. Amen. There's a there's a Yeshua uh, shaped hole in you Amen. that only He can fill. You'll never be happy until He comes in, Amen. until He straightens you up, Amen. straightens up the image of God in you, and restores it. 
uh, all of these people are in the image of God, but the image of God is distorted. Amen. And it's no fun house for God. And that's why all of this effort is being made to preach the gospel to every creature. And, and uh, there's, there's no way that we can do this unless we have the image of God. Look at Colossians chapter 3. Look, look at Ephesians. Uh, look at Ephesians, uh, I think it's chapter 4, verses 23 to 24. Look, I'm not making this up. Uh, there's a blindness in you. Amen. God has to open your eyes. Amen. There's a blindness in me. And uh, I have to tell you, there's a scripture here. In Psalm uh, 86, verse 13. And right, right here it is. Sheol Taktia. Taktia. The lower most Sheol. The lower most Sheol. It's right there. And what does that mean? That means that in Luke chapter 16, he says, Between us and you, a Tahom Gedolah, a great abyss, is fixed. We're talking about a bottomless pit. We're talking about a black hole. We're talking about an event horizon, a, a boundary of the gravitational uh, uh, pull, the, the sinkhole. The sinkhole. It is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. And if you are, uh, Luke chapter 16, if you are the rich man, in the lower most Sheol, you cannot escape that black hole. It will suck you back every time. There is a fixed, uh, there's a fixed boundary and, and a, an event horizon where anything that gets close to it will get sucked down into it. Whoever has not believed is condemned already. You're already condemned, my friend. The sinkhole inside of you is already pulling you into hell. Amen. Because you are a distorted uh, picture of God. He wants to take his perfect image and, 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 re, and, and straighten out the mirror. And he wants you to put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the, the image of the Beshefer, after the Creator. You see, the Creator who was molding Mr. Mud made Mr. Mud in his image. And the mirror was beautiful. And he looked into the mirror and he saw himself. But then sin came. And with sin came death. And so death passed to all men. And all men are distorted now. The image is distorted. It doesn't matter if the mirror has a black frame, a yellow frame, a red frame, or a white frame. It's all the same. Distorted mirrors, distorted mirrors. And it's no fun house for God. And, and regeneration, what does that mean? The res restoration of the original... Uh, image of God, the original but distorted image of God. That, 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 that's why God so loved the world. He gave his Ben Yohid, you know, so that whosoever would, 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 would believe in him and receive him would not perish, but have Haye Olam, hallelujah. And so today we're talking to you, it says, we are being transformed into the same demut, the same likeness from kavod to kavod, even as from ha'adon, the spirit. Thank you, Lord. This is what God is doing with us. This is the message of 2 Corinthians. This is what we're talking about. And until America has a revival, we will just be a broken record talking about stupidity. Who wants to talk about the, the frames when the mirrors are what's, are, are what's really germane? And, and the concept of original sin is found in Psalm 51.7, Job 14.4, and many other places. And it is, it is a, a doctrine of the Tanakh. 
It's a doctrine of King David. It's a doctrine of, of, of Job. The unclean from the unclean. That's what we're talking about. And, 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 uh, and God, hallelujah, God has a, a wonderful plan. It says, the one who believes not is condemned already. Already. In other words, you've already crossed the, the, uh, the uh, event horizon. You've already crossed. You're already sinking into the black hole. You, you're already lost. You're looking at your, your children. You're saying, oh, well, my son isn't saved, but he's a nice person, and he's going to do well in college, and he's this, and he's that. Friend, he's, he's being sucked into a malastrom, into a whirlpool, into a black hole. We have photographed a black hole. We know what, the, we know what they look like. Uh, uh, I, I preached a message. Hell, the place uh, 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 where the uh, the place uh, the the place of no return, the place of no return, and that's what I'm talking about. You are in a distorted place of no return, condemned already. Listen, a, 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 a broken mirror like that has to be trashed. And what is hell? A big trash dump of broken mirrors. Look at Adolf Hitler. God is seeing that, that, that distorted broken mirror and he wants it in the dump. He doesn't want it. Look, if, if I go into your house and I take a hammer and I smash that beautiful mirror in your living room, are you gonna keep it? Are you gonna say, well, I can take toothpaste and there's, this, there's a chemical and I can rub it down and oh yeah, I can restore it. No, you can't, it's shattered in a million pieces. Now you can still see your reflection, but it's distorted and you don't want it anymore. And so it goes out. And that's why Mashiach came. Yes, he's the real deal. He is the Adam who is also the son of God. He's the Bar Enosh. He's the image of God. He's the, the Demut Hashem. He's, he is your savior. He is the one who can straighten you out. My mother prayed for 27 years. Philip, straighten up. Philip, straighten up. And there was no straightening up until Yeshua came in and straightened me up. That's what he wants to do with you, friend. That's what it's all about. That's what he wants to do with America. I'm bored with your racism. I'm bored with you. That's all you talk about. That's all you think about, which leads me to believe that you yourself are a racist, if it's that important to you. I don't care what color your skin is. It could be purple. Doesn't matter. The main problem is, are you saved? Has your mirror, your distorted mirror that God doesn't like, been straightened up so that now he sees what he wants to see. His son, the Zun Pundar looking back at him, the image of God, the perfect image of God. Hallelujah. He died for all your distortions, every lie of the devil. He wants to come into your heart and make you a new person. The, the, the Adam Hadash, the new man. He wants to do that. Lord, I want to pray right now that as people look at what the astronomers have photographed, that they will see there is a real Gehinome that really sucks you down into an infinite, bottomless abyss. It's also in your empty heart. Oh, yes, we need Yeshua come in and straighten us up. Oh yes, Lord, I pray for everyone hearing this message that they will fill that abyss in their heart with the only thing that can fill it. The one who will come and make them new. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you that you came in and you changed me and straightened me up, something my mother couldn't do. You straighten me up. Hallelujah. Philip, have you been so long with me and you still don't know me? 
He who has seen me has seen Elohim Ha'av. We thank you for the Baranosh who comes to the Atik Yamin, who wants to come to your heart and my heart today and come in. Oh, hallelujah. It's not a fun house in here with these distorted mirrors. It's not a fun house. We have a terrible problem in America. The whole country is going awry. And I ask you, Lord, that you will change something. Hallelujah. Change somebody. Change me. Amen.